the question, who am I? Who am I? The question that we seek the answer to. The question must be proper. It also must be broken down. Who am I? To arrive at answers, we must have a question. Often the question begins with, why is this happening to me? Why is it I am not happy? Why is it I am ill? The question begins here. We often misunderstand and believe that to solve one question relieves the pain of a lifetime, and it does not. Knowledge is a never-ending flow, therefore the never-ending question. First. You have been given a question by having been given an answer. The mind, what is it? What is it? You were given the answer. It is a mechanical device. To understand it, one must pay attention to it and must not look for the answer with the mind itself. The mind itself cannot answer the question. The mind cannot answer the question. Experience answers the question. To observe the mind, to be willing to see what it has to offer, to observe it from the point of view of the observer, which means to have no preconceived notion as to what you already know. Because what you already know will color what you see. To be objective, to have a real question, we must define or separate between a question, a desire, and a wish. We often wish. Wishing is without substance. I wish I had the answer. There is no effort involved in wishing. Only wishing. I wish I were different. The answer does not lie in wishing. The wishing itself gets in the way of the answer. The answer lie in questioning and great desire great desire to know, to understand. We have designed a technique to create a great energy within your body. Some of you are experiencing this energy. We wish to create it like a pressure cooker so that it builds and builds and builds and builds and you find areas of your being opening up. Some of you are now having psychic experiences. You are now seeing events before they happen. In a moment a scene flashes before your eyes and in the next moment the reality is there. Something is happening. The question, who am I, is being answered. 
you are more than you believe yourself to be. There is a term, extrasensory perception. It is a ridiculous term. There is nothing extra about it. It is a part of your nature. You are being filled with energy. The energy is being forced to move through your body as it builds and builds and builds. It pushes forward and opens you. You must then understand the difference between emotionalism and feeling. With the rising of the energy, if we do not understand that difference, we still learn nothing. We must learn what we are. When the energy rises, we become angry, or we become frustrated, or we become sexual, or we become whatever all the things are that we become. This is emotionalism. We have not understood the relationship between thought and feeling. Thought and feeling. Feeling is the energy surge that happens within your being. We put a thought on it, a label, anger, we become emotional. And in becoming emotional, we try to direct the energy toward that object that we believe has angered us. In having done so, we have not asked the proper question. We have merely undertaken to direct the energy and we are still in darkness. It is not the other that makes us angry. We make ourselves angry by what we think of what has happened. The question cannot be answered in this way. The question of who am I? The question must be answered by feeling the energy, allowing the energy full range and full expression. But we must observe it. It is for us. It is about us the energy. It is about us. It tells you who you are. To misdirect it, you will receive no answer. Therefore, the question of who am I must be a serious question. It must be serious. And the attention must be focused inside. People and events are stimuli to awaken the energy within your being. They are stimuli. That is all. That is all.